Good morning. It's a beautiful day today, so I thought I would um, do a podcast later. And then I thought, I've got all sorts of other things that I want to do as well that people might like to see. So I thought I'll do a vlog cast. So here I am, Sunday morning, cup of tea, no, coffee. Um, I've got a new phone and the camera is probably better than my old one. So that's not very flattering. Um, yeah, I said I was having a coffee. I need to sew a button on that dress there. I need to tidy up my desk. Do you know, I never finished the crackers. I finished some and sent them to my mum. Luckily, they arrived just in time. Um, and I made the crowns. My friend Barbara sent me some gorgeous hand creams and whatnot and uh, wrapped it up in this tissue paper that is just beautiful so I thought I'm going to make crowns for the crackers out there so they're all still for next year I've got loads and I've got the snaps and I've got all of these crackers cut out but you know what I am going to finish them But I don't think I really like my choice of fabrics. They're just a bit bold. Mind you, I am liking the darker, more bold colours lately. I think that's just a cosy up in winter thing. I want to spend a bit of time looking at my seed books. I'd like to, I've got mending to do. So I'm going to show you this. Got these leggings and they are absolutely perfect they're not thin on the bum thin on the knees or anything but they're beginning to go in the seams look you can see where I've mended some holes because you know my thighs rub together all right <laughs> but the rest of the leggings are perfectly fine and they're comfortable and it aren't leggings boring things to buy if I was going to buy clothing I want it to be a pretty dress or a camisole or a blouse with some lace on it I just want to spend my money on gorgeousness not plain boring navy leggings so I want to mend those um Toby's favorite pajamas have got a hole in so I want to mend those but oh, honestly he needs new ones Look, they've all gone at the edge up there, but if I sew the hole up, that'll give him another couple of weeks and I can look for some exactly the same as this. That's horrible, isn't it? You were very close to my face then and the light was such that you could see where I lie on my side. I sleep like this. Toby says, he turns around and I'm like that. A pout and a scowl. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Yeah, and then I've got knitting I want to talk to you about. I finished a sweater. I finished two sweaters, but I haven't finished sewing in the ends of this one. But I'm going to vlog about it today anyway, I think. Mm. Yeah, and I've got that area there to tidy up. Look, I still haven't finished eating my advent calendar. There's my sweater that's finished. Oh, and did I say I want to go in the greenhouse and sow some seeds? You can sow sweet peas now under cover. It says so on the packet. And I've got sweet peas seeds that I collected last year. I didn't do very well with that. And I've got these for baskets and containers sweet peas, which I've not grown before. And then I've got another two packets of just standard sweet peas. So I'm going to sow a couple of each of those just to um, get the garden going. And then in a few months, I'll sow another couple of each of those because I um, I found that my sweet peas started looking quite tatty after a while and I would just like to be able to have them, some younger ones growing. Oh, I know what my arm, I know what I mean. 
I made it out into my greenhouse. I'm very happy with myself because last time I was in here, I had a massive tidy. It won't look tidy on the film, but it's organised. Everything's organised. Got all my geraniums and things in here and other things I was hoping to overwinter. Oh, I've got to go and get my agapanthus in. If I don't do that now, I'm going to forget. I'm meaning to do it for about six weeks. Okay, I brought them in. I've been thinking about that for so long. I probably thought about it for more minutes than it took for me to actually do the job. Look at this fabulous thing. Phil gave me this. Phil's our builder. I don't know if it works. You have to put paraffin in there, then you light it. Light the wick. Looks like I need a new wick. You put water in this tray and that gives you some humidity some warm humidity in the greenhouse so that would be quite good if, if i know that i've got plants in here that just need a little extra protection if we get a massive cold snap which we never seem to have lately i've had to take my cardigan off it's really warm in here i'm gonna hang it on the wheelbarrow leg there we go Right, um, these are the other two sweet peas, Singing the Blues and Muse. And it says for indoor sowing January to March or October to November. So I'm going to sow a bit of everything. Um, and then I've promised myself I'm going indoors, we'll wash my hands, we'll go indoors and start talking about my knitting because otherwise I know what happens. My greenhouse and my garden is a complete time suck. Every time I'm out here, everywhere my eye lands, there's a job to do. I just glanced out the window, there's a blanket of weeds. I've got these funny little creeping weeds. They're pretty, they're like little miniature snapdragons, but they swamp everything, so they need picking up. And, oh, there's just lots to do. I've just spotted I've got a shrub and it's sat in a pot a saucer and it is um, drowning so I need to deal with that before I go in honestly I could be out here all day <laughs> oh I've got a bit wheezy because of it's chilly outside it's warm in here and I've just exerted myself carrying heavy pots and there's a chopper airplane going over um, now I'm wheezy that's what happens all done I don't enjoy um, filling these root trainers up. You think you filled it and then you put your finger in and it all collapses because it's not filled. Right, let's put their lids on. It says they need to overwinter over over somewhere cool in a cold frame or a greenhouse. So I'll just leave them there. What a faff. Taking forever to get myself sorted out to come and vlog pod and now the light's going and my necklace is caught in my hair oh. and my nails are messed up from gardening I've broken two of them I'm not really that vain maybe I am uh, there's gonna be noise okay there's gonna be creaky chair I'm gonna try not to swivel though there's going to be the dog perpetually licking her leg don't know what's going on with her it was bunny that was perpetually licking her leg but she stopped doing that and now it's margot um wilfred is directly above me here playing a computer game with his friends and all i can hear is him wriggling about on his chair so i just had to go for it or it wasn't going to happen i've got my knitting basket here so i'm just going to go through it and stop when it's when it's done so first of all my striped sweater I think I you knew that this was finished I blocked it on Christmas Eve and I've started weaving in the many many ends as you can see and it's a bit crumpled because I I was doing it and then something called me away and I dumped it 
and I did not go back to it. This is the first time I've picked it up in over a week. Oh, broken another nail. Oh, that's really low down and it's gonna catch on everything. I've, I've just got, these are the only um, ends left. You can see how many there are because there's two for each stripe. I'm gonna try it on. This will be the first time I've tried it on since I blocked it, I think. If I have tried it on after blocking it, I can't remember. Looks really short, doesn't it? I didn't think I would have enough yarn to just stick with the three colours that Barbara sent me. So I added in one that I already had. And you can really see that it is a different composition. There's no nylon in it. It's the same merino, but there's no nylon in it. And you can see the stitches just look really different. And also, strangely, they look like they're twisting off to the side. Oh, it's not showing. Now I can hear the dog trying, the other one, Bunny trying to get in. Yeah, it's really strange. In real life, they they do look like they're listing to the side. A bit like me on a Friday night when I've had one too many. Oh. Right, let's put this on then. Oh, squeaky chair. is the worst dress to try it on with. The plan for this is to wear over different things. Oh, I look like a shed. I look like an absolute unit. Never mind. <laughs> um, this is not the right dress. How can I pull this in and make it look more how it should look? I don't know. Boobs, there we go. Oh, I've had an idea. Here we go. Right, I will not be seen out like this because I'm stood in just a pair of leggings. This is how it looks. I'm wondering if I could have done with going a bit longer. That's so horrendously unflattering. Yeah, I don't walk around wearing leggings as as trousers. That's just blinking magic, that is. Just taking this off. I haven't even worn it properly. And it got caught in my hoe. Yep, there it is. Got caught on my safety catch on my bracelet. Look, so these are at the ends that need sewing in, and I've got a massive pull. I doubt it will show very much, but I will sit down and spend the time just slackening off all of the stitches either side that have tightened up so that the pull gets reabsorbed back into the jumper. I think until I've put it on with an outfit that I really like, rather than this dress. I I don't know whether I like it or not. <laughs> I feel like I've not made the best of the yarn. I think until I've tried this on with an outfit that it works really well with, I'm not sure whether I like it yet. You see, the thing is, I don't have ginormous boobies, but they're certainly not tiny. And stripes that go in this kind of shape aren't necessarily the most flattering. I'm wondering whether I should have knitted more of a raglan top in stripes so that the stripes went across and then along because then that would have given a little bit more structure. But we will see. I absolutely loved knitting it. I loved the yarn. I learnt some new things like this folded down um, neck. And I learned jogless stripes. Can't actually remember off the top of my head how to do that, so I didn't really learn them. I just executed them whilst I needed to. And 
also left lifted increases, which flummoxed me. I just thought that was make one left. It's not. It isn't. The dog's barking. Yeah, so if you go to do this, don't make the same mistake as me. Follow the instructions. She's got wonderful videos, does Andrea Maori. Watch them. She's very easy to watch as well. No wonder vlogging's easier for me because people expect vlogging to be a shambles, but podcasts kind of got to get your act together, haven't you? Mine is not together. Oh, I'm just going to take a minute and really, really enjoy my coffee. I've just left one more sip in there. The yarn I used was... Oh, it's fell out of my brain, what was it? Ains... The yarn I used was Ainsworth & Prin, which I think is the Knitting Shed's own brand. I've got loads left. Here's the three. There's the three Barbara sent me. I've got that much left. So I probably wouldn't have had enough to have done all of the stripes, the additional stripes in this, plus the collar cuffs and the rib at the waist. So it was a good job. Oh, blimey. So these could be something else on their own or something else together. Might do strops. Strops. <laughs> I might do stripy socks. <laughs> ah, I like it when words go funny like that. Next is my tiger's eye jumper. It's the Trescal jumper. And um, I think I did the... German short rows slightly wrong because they they looked quite messy. I've corrected them now, but they looked to me quite messy. Um, I I've got some things to mend on here. So, do you know, for a simple knit, it took me ages to get on with because a couple of things about this before I put it on. I did, I had to redo it a couple of times and I can't remember why now. One of them, I think I messed up the increases. I didn't read the pattern properly. So now and again, the increases aren't, they're not consistent. They change so that you get a bit more of a shape to the raglan rather than dunk. It kind of goes mm, like that. It's very nice. But you have to pay attention to the pattern or you won't end up with that very nice shape. So I had to redo that. Also, I made a few little, I don't even know how I did it, but I made a few errors on the raglan on the increases. Where's, where is one? Now, a blind man would want to see it. Can you see all of these are like kisses and then there's two here that are just strands and two here that are just strands and not kisses. And then there's a funny one there. And I've got a few like that, but no one's really going to notice and I'm not going to be inspecting myself. I've also got a stitch that I dropped here, right in the middle of the body. So that's annoying, so I need to deal with that. There's also something a bit funny there, right on the chest. I still can't see what I did there. Looks like I slipped a stitch. I don't know what I did. It... Yeah. I don't know what I did. I mean, it's right here, but if people are looking there, they're gonna get a slap. This is the yarn that I dyed when I went on the Woolle retreat. Um, I went there a day earlier because Kelly is my friend. Um, we met on Instagram like 
many of us do. Oh, that's probably for you. Um, but we're friends outside of Instagram and um, <sighs> I'm really struggling with my words. And I look awful. This camera's making all the colours look funny. I look like I'm a beige jacket potato. Look, I look like I've done that contouring. I promise I haven't. See? It's just the way the light is. As I was saying, Kelly and I are proper friends, like proper in real life friends, we chat on the phone and um, know each other in real life. We obviously met through Instagram, but we're real mates. I don't know why I'm saying that. I think it's because I'm just chuffed. <laughs> So I went up a day earlier so that I could spend a bit of extra time with Kelly, Nick and Megan and Nick helped me dye, well he showed me how to dye up the colour of the this yarn that I wanted, it's, it's called Tiger's Eye and it's a double knit. Now it's a new base, I can't remember the proper information, it's 100% merino I think. Um, but th there's, there's something, it's more microns or less microns or a different twist but it is buttery buttery soft it's so lovely look can you see the the drape it's absolutely delicious and I think it's made a really nice jumper I did helical knitting which I don't know that I would do again because I can see it in certain lights you can't see it here but you can definitely see a line going down horizontally diagonally on in my knitting oh, you can you can see it and I don't like it I think I would prefer to just carry the yarn up the sides which is what I did with the sleeves there I just think that that's for me a finish I prefer. I prefer to have something that looks like a seam where we are used to having seams rather than having a weird shadow of stitches that are lying just ever so slightly different to the stitches above and below. What else can I tell you about this? Oh, I dropped a stitch and didn't realise till I'd finished the sleeve. Where is it? Oh, you trust me, don't you? It's here, there it is. Here he is, sticking up. So I've got to sew those two dropped stitches in. Oh, that's really annoying that all the mistakes that are really obvious are on the blooming front. Right, I'm going to shove this on over the top of this unflattering dress and we'll see how it looks. I have not tried this on since before I blocked it. Before I blocked it, the sleeves finished about here, bracelet length, and I knew that they'd stretch a bit. And the waist finished on my waist and I knew it would stretch a bit. But oh my goodness, when I blocked it and when it came out, when I unravelled it from the towels that I'd stamped on it in, it, I was alarmed. The sleeves, they were about this much longer, I kid you not. Anyway, it, um, I, I didn't pin it out or anything, I just let it dry and every now and again I would go up to it and I would kind of give it a little like waft so that if it was drying and was wanting to shrink in, it wasn't being held unnaturally long and then this morning when it was dry it actually looked like it might have oh yeah it has it's perfect oh thank goodness thank goodness it stretched a little bit more than I anticipated it would oh I love it I know I love it um my dress is stupid it's the sleeves right up by my armpits let's pull them down 
gotta be careful of this bracelet. I don't want to end up catching. Oh my goodness, I love this. Oh, so many memories attached to, to this, to the thinking about what I wanted to knit, asking Kelly, would it be possible to have her dye up a sweater's quantity of this yarn for me? And she said, no, you'll have to do it yourself, which just, that shows how well she knows me. She knows that I love anything like that. And anything to beef out the story behind something or the memory behind something, I am all for that. So that was lovely. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. <gasps> it doesn't look too bad over this dress. I don't think I'm gonna have to take it off to show you how it looks. Take the dress off to show you how it looks and stand there in my leggings. I mean, this is not, you know, this is a potato dress, isn't it? A sack dress, so what's that? What are you? Oh yeah, I haven't. I've woven in all my ends, but I've left them long just in case. Oh my gracious, I absolutely love it. So this Trescal pattern is um, by Alonga Vec Anna and it's a freebie one. She does it in a cardigan version and that's a paid for one. You have short row shaping at the back to make it slightly longer, which is nice. And um, yeah, and then you decrease for the sleeves down there <laughs> and these little garter stitch things cuffs oh i'm very pleased very very pleased i spoke to kelly the other day and said i'm gonna have this my tiger's eye jumper finished this weekend so when i talk about it shall i what shall i say to people about um the yarn if they wanted to get it themselves and she very kindly said well we've got some in stock but if they want a sweaters quantity sweaters quantity then drop her a line and she'll just add you to her list so um you can get it it's just don't know when when you would get it um as usual i've got a feeling that i could have knitted the size down I gauge swatched, but my gauge swatches always, always, always lie to me. It's, it, I don't think I've ever had a gauge swatch that has translated into the actual item in the same gauge. I don't know what it is about it. I just, I can get perfect gauge on my swatch and then same yarn, same needles, merrily knitting and the gauge is completely out. And I think I'm always looser. I think that's the way around it goes. So I've ended up, this is very nice, I'm glad of this, but I have ended up with, this is a whole skein. And then this is what's left, you can see, now, I dyed this, and I dyed each of them exactly the same, same amount of water, same temperature of water, same um, grams of dye. I thought someone was coming in then. Same grams of dye, and yet, I think I did, I did do four or five skeins. Actually cannot recall now. Um, I'll weigh this and tell you how much yarn I used, okay? And I'll put it on the screen here. But this one here came out quite different. So that was one of the reasons why I started it twice. It's because I wanted to um, sure it was five skeins because the other four were more the same colour. And I thought with alternating them, these having, it just gave you a better chance. So that could be something stunning, can't it? And I've got some floof, boggy swamp fog floof that I dyed up. I don't know why I'm holding that on my head. Dyed up when I went to the first Willet retreat that I went on. 
that would make a nice hat. Mind you, I love it just like that. Oh, love having yarn leftovers. Oh, I'm so happy with this jumper. I'm sure there's other things that I should have said to you. Do you know, I'm not going to tell you what size needles and all of that kind of thing because your gauge will be different to my gauge and my gauge didn't even match my gauge swatch. So it's all a load of rubbish. So you do your own needle choosing. Next woolly thing I want to talk about and then I've got a bit of miscellaneous is I'm knitting a giant boob. This is my little ball holdery thing. I love this. I just got it off the Tinterweb somewhere, probably Amazon. And you just knit and it just gives you your, your um, yarn. You don't have to do that business. Let me just tidy this up. So yeah, I am knitting a giant boob. With a coat hook nipple. <laughs> it's actually going to be a berry. It's the Biz Biz Berry by Sari Nordland. Um, I think that's her name. And this yarn is Julie Aslin yarn that lovely Amy, my friend Amy, gave me. Um, for Christmas, Taylor Studio, that's Amy. Um, that's all as far as I've got, but I did all of that last night whilst watching the first hour of The Talented Mr Ripley, which I've never watched before. And I've got, I've got another 45 minutes to watch. I didn't realize it was such a long film. Um, so I, I might get this halfway done by tonight. I found with my gauge and with this yarn that the make one lefts were too difficult to execute, um, especially when you were doing it on every row to start with. So I just did the yarn over and on the next row I knit through the back of the yarn over. Um, I think it looks fine and I'm enjoying it. And that's all I've got to say about that. Miscellaneous. I just wanted to show you two things that I was given for Christmas. I, was, I, I requested, much to people's annoyance, no presents this year because I have too much stuff. And when you've got too much stuff, it means you can't go out and buy and choose your own stuff. And when you've got too much stuff, me, when I've got too much stuff, when I'm feeling overwhelmed by too much stuff, it strips me of that joy of going out and choosing my own thing. So this year I said to everybody, yeah, don't, don't buy me anything. But I appreciate that it's really hard when you want to buy somebody something to not get them anything so um amy for a start when she sent <laughs> the gifts to me she said i know you didn't want anything but i ignored you <laughs> and i have to say i am delighted that she ignored me because <laughs> i love that yarn um and my mum ignored me as well she got me a few bits and pieces uh but i wanted to show you this that she made it's just darling I hope that's focusing. I don't know. So she's, it's a needle book that she's stitched entirely by hand. It's got sweet fabric, sweet little ribbons. You can tuck your scissors or whatever's under there. Um, felt little pages. I've got this one, I've got loads of needle books. Um, two of them were made as presents for me, so they're precious. But I do have this one. I think I've got another calf kids one that's shaped like a house. And um, they're lovely, but 
they, they mean nothing to me. There's no memories attached to these. So I will decant this into this and then this will go on its way to a new home. Next thing I want to show you is this. It's a box of wood chips. It's this delicious spoon and when it comes he the guy packs it I think that's a card oh brilliant um packs it in the carvings from the spoon or the thing that he's made um the guy is called the woodland carver he's on instagram as at the woodland carver and he's got a website www.thewoodlandcarver.co.com Dot com. Look at this spoon. I haven't used it yet because I wanted to keep it lovely to show you. Gorgeous. How lovely is that? I wonder if I could dangle it on my chin. I can with a metal one. I can, I can, this light's awful. I can get a metal one to stick on my chin and then I can do this with it and it bobs up and down. There's a video on Facebook that my stepsister took somewhere of me doing that. There we go. I think that's quite enough for me today. I'm going to tidy up the mess that I've made because I've moved everything around to do this recording and most of it has been dumped over there. So I need to deal with that. And I'll be back gracing your screens before you know it. <laughs> that was stupid. Yes, I've nothing else to talk about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.